Hey, what's going on, guys? Good Mickey Kings here. Today, we're starting our great journey into the world of the Bitboard Chess Engine. And the very first thing I'd like to kickstart with uh, is actually to uh, create some sort of a helper, uh, helper macros and functions to make the development process easier and more enjoyable. And also, I'll need to, to create the make file uh, involving not only mm, the line to compile this only source file code to binary executable. Uh, for Linux, that, uh, assuming that I, I am on Linux, basically, but I also want to create, uh, 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 but I also want to maintain the Windows binary executables as well to make sure that my code is portable and if any issues arises, uh, would be arising regarding the Windows compilation, I, I need to make sure that I can keep track of them. And obviously, if you have some uh, issues with compiling the source code on Windows, please let me know in the commentaries and together we'll be looking for a solution. Uh, of how to fix that. So the very first thing to consider, I need to import some system headers. So here I can say uh, include stdio.h to be able to print uh, something to the console. And obviously I need to provide the main driver. So creating the main function that would return zero because it's the type of integer also I want to print something to console and by the way the name of this engine I picked up is BBC which stands for Bitbird Chess quite pretty simple uh, and also I want to get character uh, from the user input to being able to test this uh, on Windows uh, 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 on Windows on Wine uh, uh, using Wine environment on my Linux to run the Windows binary executables. Okay, so let's create the make file now and make file like this. So I want to switch to tabs uh, instead of spaces because otherwise the format of make file won't be recognized. So we'll have two options in our make file, the release mode and the debug mode. So in the release mode I just uh, I want to say GCC uh, minus O fast which stands for uh, optimization various optimization flags for our uh, chess engine which would make it plain faster actually than the name so uh, bbc.c minus O bbc and now I need to do the same but uh, using the GCC cross compilers so both uh, compilers would be producing the 64-bit binary executables either for, for Linux or for Windows so here I say x86-64 uh, w64 min gw32 GCC I hope I spelled this correctly and again minus uh, sorry minus o fast and bbc.c minus o this time bbc dot uh, executable windows extension like this so uh, now I just want to open the terminal in the current working directory hold my breath and try to compile and run this first uh, I'll try to run this for Linux like this Okay, so it waits for user input and exits. Perfect. And now I just want to open the term, uh, and I just want to open the current working directory to make sure that the same works for Windows. But yeah, not like this. I want to open this with Wine Windows Program Loader. Okay. Okay. So here, here he prints and waits for for user input. So I just hit enter and it exits. Perfect. So. Mm, uh, I would have been passing this make file along with the tutorials one by one along with, along with the tutorials, so you, you won't be you won't really need to create this on your own every time but uh, also uh, I just want to create the debug mode here and here uh, I need well, let me just better copy this this would be a better idea and here I just want to get rid of this minus O fast flag to make it compile faster, but uh, actually the engine would be working slower. But, but for the debugging purposes, this is just this is literally just fine. So again, I want to now I want to say make debug, which we would be making all of the time. Okay, it works. And also uh, I want to make sure that it still makes. Uh, view folder that it still makes for Windows, so it's probably sh should have it had to be updated, right? Yes, it had to be updated here. 
So I just opened this with a wine loader to make sure it still kind of works. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So, uh, yeah, from now on we can actually uh, focus on writing the code for our chess engine and not getting bothered by this compilation anymore. And again, like mm, the, com the command that I'm supposed to be using in order to compile and run this code would be this make debug and then just try to run this executable. So feel free to alter this line uh, uh, depending on your oper operating system and the development environment. Okay, so uh, now we'll start uh, with our bit manipulations, but before this I want to define the so-called bitboard type. Uh, bitboard data type. So uh, I'll use the define directive Maybe not the best ever practice, but still uh, quite pretty uh, clear and straightforward. So uh, I will define the type called u64 as unsigned long long integer. Uh, the idea of this uh, data type is that it is up to 64 bits long and it doesn't have the sign like plus or minus. So it's just uh, unsigned uh, integer, ju just as it claims here. And here we'll start uh, defining our um, uh, uh, bit macros and helper functions. But uh, before actually, uh, actually before defining those macros, I would probably like uh, to start with uh, creating the print bitboard uh, function, which is an absolutely essential uh, debugging form function that we would be making use uh, along all the tutorial series. So let's create the void function called print print bitboard and it's not gonna uh, uh, or hold on a sec uh, uh, yeah it it, 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 it it gonna take u64 bitboard as an argument so uh, not the pointer but just copying this variable to print this okay so uh, just in order to make sure which uh, which bitboard in particular we would be printing here okay and now we need to loop over uh, board ranks and we just simply say for int rank equals zero rank is less than eight and rank plus plus and the same uh, we need to loop over board files and here I say for int file equals zero file is less than eight and file plus plus now the next thing to consider we need to uh, initialize the square the, the board square in other words uh, we'll need to convert the file and rank to the square uh, or I can even say this as well so convert file and rank into square square index like this so I'll create the integer called square here and in order to calculate this we need simply to say rank multiplied by 8 plus file and this is kind of it so Mm, now, uh, well, uh, I would like to uh, print new line every rank, uh, and here just print f and the new line, nothing much. And here, uh, well, for now, let's simply just try to print f our square, so decimal. Uh, like this, probably like this as well, and the square. So not no bit worse for now. So just uh, I'm just debugging this uh, double for loops at the moment. Nothing much. So make debug and if compiles run BBC. Uh, okay, excuse me. Uh, I didn't save something or what's going on? Oh well, that's because yeah, everything is correct here. So uh, I actually need to say, well, let's create u64 bitboard, uh, just just a variable equals to zero unsigned long long. This is absolutely essential to specify this unsigned long long to make sure that this 
constant uh, would actually be the type of unsigned loan loan so 64 uh, up to 64 bits without uh, without a sign and now just print bitboard and I'm passing this bitboard just because it's requ required by the function itself uh, but for now we're not dealing with this just just for now so let's try and run this again okay so now we have our uh, now we have our uh, index has been printed perfect so we'll also add some files and ranks uh, uh, definitions here to make it even more readable but before that let's actually go to the most essential part so uh, we need to Mm. Now we need to initialize. Now we need to represent the empty squares uh, uh, of the current bit board, uh, the bits that are actually equal to zero. We want to represent them as zeros, and all the bits that are rep that are actually turned on, we would be representing them as ones, and that's the reason. Uh, why we need to create uh, an expression that would be uh, uh, that would be telling us where uh, whether the bit uh, at the current uh, at the cu cu current in the square or the current uh, uh, index is actually equal to one or not. So in order to do this, we need to to take uh, one unsigned long long constant and left shift uh, this one uh, to the number of bits equal to this square that we have and we all and we actually need uh, so this is this is an expression and now we need to take our bit board and to bitwise end this bit board with uh, this sort of an expression and in case if it returns true in this case let me just enclose this within parentheses if it returns true true it means that the bit is actually available there because bitwise and one and one would be equal to one but if it's but if it's not that means that that is that it's not available so i can simply use the ternary operator here so in case if it returns true i just want to print one otherwise i want to print zero here so uh let's actually go for this again and now we have all the zeros because we don't have yet any uh any bits being set up but let's say i just uh, initialize this as one unsigned loan loan and already we see kind of this bit is available and let's say if i just say four uh the bit should be printed right over here because this bit is equal is uh, worse one this two four eight sixteen uh uh, 32 64 148 and so on so let's have a look yeah so bit is been printed uh, correctly okay uh, so this this is already pretty nice and in order to wait uh, uh, writing this expression all the time it's quite uh, uh, it's quite handy to uh, make a macro out of it so I just uh, get rid of this expression for a while and here Mm. Uh, I will create uh, bit macros and mm, let's let's actually call them uh, set get pop macros. So uh, those are the macros that we're supposed to be implementing. Well, at least in this video. So uh, I can simply say like define and let's call this macro get bit so we're, we're asking whether whether the bit uh, is available at the target square so wh what what do we need to pass to our macro so the bit board itself first and then the square and in return we'll get we'll uh, uh, we'll have this expression so every time we print this in our source code it would be imp uh, implicitly replaced by this uh, by, by this sort of an expression so from now on uh, I can simply say like uh, get bit and uh, our bit board and the square that we're looking for uh, so here we can already say like uh, print bit state uh, 
uh, either let's make it in the parentheses either one or zero like this okay so now should get, get uh, now should return absolutely the same result because again like this is just uh, the matter of C language C preprocessor that actually uh, changes this like expressions where where our it finds this with, within the source code with this like expressions that that we that we really need to make use of. Okay, so uh, let's now let's kind of uh, prettify this slightly bit first. I don't really want that many uh, that many spaces. Second thing, uh, I would like to uh, print ranks. So we can say if either file equals to zero like this, or or a short short card if not file simply like this. Uh, in this case, we want to print uh, our rank. So decimal number space and here mm, 8 minus rank to give an appropriate order uh, for our ranks so let's have a look how it's supposed to look like okay so this is quite pretty nice i just want to add one more space right over in here okay also it would have been nice to print another a uh, new line at the very beginning because I just I want yeah I really want to make it separate and after we end up the loop we need to print uh, word files and also uh, I would like to print the big word in the in the decimal format which is really uh, handy for the debugging purposes so let's first say print f and new lines uh, probably yeah new line right over in here and a b c d e f g h like this so slightly too many spaces okay so now we have our files and ranks been printed uh, along with uh, our bitboard so now we, see, we can already see the coordinate of, of where the bit is being set up so we see like the bit at the square of c8 has been set up so this makes more sense from the human perspective not from the computer perspective and also we want to print bitboard as uh, unsigned uh, unsigned decimal uh, value or number like this so i just simply say printf and here uh, we need to say uh, long long unsigned decimal and bitboard and this value okay so and the bitboard itself so let's have a look yeah we got this bitboard equals to four and this d stands for it's decimal so uh that's because uh, i'm printing the unsigned value that's why this d happens so literally it's kind of equal to four uh and now also let me specify the proper layout for this uh for this information yeah now it looks quite pretty nice already okay so uh the next the next thing to consider so what we what we've done so far we did uh, set our bits using the constant that we actually assigned to this unsigned long uh bitboard variable here but uh it would be nice to actually be able to set uh the bits uh in uh, uh, to, to the particular square say say bit to e2 or, or uh, uh, play, uh, uh turn on the bit on e2 or on e4 uh, and so on so at the moment uh, I just want to write some helper function that would be uh, quite pretty, uh, uh, quite pretty the same as our bitboard. So let me just try to quickly grab this code. Uh, you'll now understand. Or hold on a sec, it's probably done even easier. So I can say for hold on, so just int uh, 
this, well, let's call this rank. I just want to print the table of uh, squ of squares in human readable format to use them uh, to enu to enumerate them uh, using the enum keywords. So rank equals to zero, rank uh, less than eight, rank plus plus, uh, and here I just want to print f. So we will have uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and we'll have this decimal formatting specifier as well. So here, rank one two three four five six seven eight save and also i want the new line at the very end uh and probably yeah i just uh misplaced the rank uh, the ranks as well so let me just have a look how it's supposed to be look how it's supposed to look like yeah i just need uh absolutely on the country so let's make rank equals to 8, greater, equ uh, greater equals the 1, and rank minus minus. Okay, so just to avoid printing this by hand, uh, I've generated this programmatically. And now uh, we can actually do the following stuff. So we can enumerate, uh, well, let's simply say enum uh, word squares, okay? Uh, or just just this even so enum and here uh, I'm using our board squares to make use of so uh, yeah I also I forgot to put the commas okay now it's much better okay so now let's try to initialize a bit say on E2. So from now on, E2 is the constant. So I don't need this uh, stuff. Well, at least for now, we will also need the same for mm, to represent the squares in a human readable format. So probably we can, probably we can go for this now as well. Uh, I'm not really sure if I should do this now. So can I? Uh, yeah, it seems like I can. So paste, paste, paste. And comma, save. So I would also be using this. Uh, I would also be using this squares uh, but at the moment uh, as far as I'm not I don't really need them uh, for a while I'll just uh, command them out so to preserve them for the future so in order to wait uh, writing this two lines of code in the future okay so um, now let's make the bitboard equals to zero again so we have no uh, we have nothing uh, been set up there and now uh, Let's do the following stuff. So we could say bitboard bitwar bitwise or equals and now let's take this expression one and sign lon lon right the left shift to the uh actually the the square where exactly we want to place our piece. So let's let's take this E2. Okay, so let's take this E2. Then it should print the bit on e2 from now so we just set up our bit on e2 which is pretty nicely ni nicely already so the next thing to consider here would be uh to turn this expression into the macro so how how is how is supposed to to look like so just want to get rid of this here and go in right over in here and define set bit macro so it would be taking the bit board again 
and the square were actually to set this bit board and now regarding uh, the macro itself so instead of this uh, particular co coordinate we, we, we would be using our square whatever send there uh, so this this is it and now uh, we can simply say like set bit let's try to set bit on e4 so uh, sorry set bit undeclared excuse me uh, uh, what did I do wrong set bit Oh, port. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, bit port. Just because uh, I didn't specify the first argument. Okay. So now we get this bit uh, that is set up on E4, which is absolutely great. So now we can set set, set our bits on uh, whatever uh, on whatever. Let's say squares we like C3. Let's say F2. So now we already have these bits being set up. Well, later on we will assume these bits are uh, re does represent the pieces, but for now we're interested just in setting this bit in the particular coordinate. So this is what I've been talking about when mentioning the comfortable and easy to use and enjoyable uh, uh, environment to to develop the Bitboard Chess engine within. So we can easily say set bit, then where to set, and uh, like what bit board to set this bit on and where exactly so uh, the very last thing we need to mm, take care of is actually we need to be able to uh, pop the bit or in other words to remove the bit to reset them back to zero and the way uh, I prefer doing this probably not the fastest and not the best uh, ever available but still it works and I think it's just quite pretty fine for the for the didactic purposes at least so uh, let's consider this uh, that we print uh, print our bit board and then we'll do some manipulation uh, in order to remove say the bit from e4 so if i can simply say like uh, uh bit board uh and now i'm using this xor uh bitwise operator that uh, turns one to zero and turns zero to one respectively so if I say bitboard x4 and then this expression 1 unsigned long long left shift 2 and then the square we want to remove this from and if I then just try to print the bitboard one more time it should get uh, the e4 bit away so you see like here we have this e4 bit and here we got this away but uh, this expression is not yet enough because if we just try to make it several times it would be shifting this bit back and forth so it's not an option for us right so here initially it's it is then it gets uh, removed and then it gets initialized uh, again so we need to uh, it's not it's not an option for us so we need to do this only in case uh, if uh, it's too many print bit boards sorry guys just hold on uh, print bit board okay so we need to make uh, we need to do this only in case if the get bit macro uh, uh, if the get bit and we pass in the bit board and the square e4 in our case would return true which means that bit is there only in this case we need to do this stuff otherwise we need to, I just place zero to, to do literally nothing so now the result is still the same but if we just start uh, making this job again and again uh, it's uh, it turns out that the bit is no longer been is no longer blinking back and forth so it's just been removed only once when the bit was actually available so the very last thing we need to do here is actually to enclose this sort of an expression into a macro itself so uh, let's now go for actually doing this so I need to say get bit uh, okay and let me just uh, take this so the very last thing we need to define the pop bit macro it takes the bit board it takes the square and now just paste this stuff in and 
here uh, I'm asking the get bit not for the e4 but for a current given square actually and then uh, we bitwise or in our bit board uh, with the current given square with one and send along shift it to the current uh, square like this and at this moment we it should be literally enough to say just pop bit and let's say e4 and now let's check uh sorry pop bit past the bit board and the e4 so here is our e4 bit and here we just pop this and the very last uh test to take here is actually i just want to again like make this a couple of times to make sure that the bit is getting popped only once and is not coming back ever so just perfect uh we now we now actually got this uh so let me let me just try to see if this is really it for this part at least uh well i guess i guess it is this is it for this part so yeah now i just the very last thing uh to consider just want to provide some commentary so here we just define a uh, bit board uh here set in some bits okay so here we just printed the bit state using this get bit macro that was already been explained just print and bit board literally what it is uh, uh, res uh, reset bit and print the bit board again like this okay yeah let's just run this one final time yeah it seems like it's working quite pretty nicely well guys so this is it for the very first part uh you know we're journey to the wonderful world of bitboard chess engines and here we did set up uh, the very basic macros so to set bit to get bit and to remove bit using, using this pop bit uh so-called pop bit macro and also we we did provide the very essential debugging function called the print board here to be able actually to see this like pr pretty printed bit board comfortable uh uh for debugging comfortable for uh, for for the human eyes readable nice and cute okay guys so this is it from my side i hope you've learned something interesting out of this tutorial i really appreciate uh, uh those of you who has actually who has just started following this series and is actually have uh, uh, big enough and iron enough balls to uh, jump right into the series of really lots of videos regarding this bit bird chess engine so keep it up guys this is really cool I'm proud of you and uh, the very last thing uh, I need to mention that if you have any troubles with the compilation please let me know in the commentaries like what kind of environment are, are you using and we'll try to get through this and see uh, what we can do together in order to make it work on your side so this is it from my side again until the next time see you next video and take care